Or if you turn to Zechariah chapter 6. Zechariah chapter 6, we'll start in verse 9. The word of Jehovah came unto me, saying, Take of them of the captivity, even of Heldai, and of Tob Tobiah, and Jedidiah, which are come from Babylon, and come thou the same day, and go to the house of Josiah, the son of Zephaniah. Then take silver and gold, and make crowns, and set them upon the head of Joshua, the son of Yosedek, the high priest. And speak unto him, saying, Thus speaketh Jehovah Tzavot, saying, Behold the man whose name is the branch, and he shall grow up out of his place, and he shall build the temple of Jehovah. Even he shall build the temple of Jehovah, and he shall bear the glory, and shall sit and rule upon his throne. And he shall be a priest upon his throne, and the council of peace shall be between them both. And crown shall be to Helam, and to Tobijah, and to Jedidiah, and to Hen, the son of Zephaniah, for a memorial in the temple of Jehovah. And they that are far off shall come and build in the temple of Jehovah. And ye shall know that Jehovah Sabaoth hath sent me unto you. And this shall come to pass, if ye will diligently obey the voice of Jehovah your God. Alright, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Yeshua, Jehovah, I just come to you this afternoon and I praise your holy name. I thank you, Yeshua, for... Call me Jehovah and for shedding your blood and, and being the sacrifice of propitiation for our sins. And I thank you for your word. I thank you, Jehovah, for the, these words about the branch, which is speaking of yourself, Jehovah, and how everything you've done and will do is to build up the, the temple in the heavens made without hands and to restore that which you wanted and created and willed in the beginning and to bring us back into your house, back through the gates, through that city, in robes of spotless white, Jehovah. And I just thank you for all you've done. And I pray, praise your holy name, and thank you for all you've done, Yeshua HaMashiach. In your precious name, so be it. So here in Zechariah, we find in chapter 6, in verse 12, it says, And speak unto him, saying, Thus speaketh Jehovah Tzavoah, saying, Behold the man whose name is the branch, in all capitals, and he shall grow up out of his place. Okay? Remember that verse. He shall grow up out of his place, and I will explain to you how this word here is written in English. And I'm going to show you something later. And then it says, and he shall build the temple of Jehovah. For the last several weeks, we've been talking about God that builds. And God will destroy the Babylonians, Nimrod, the devil, and all them that try to build their own little temples and their own little religion. And their rebellion and their love of the evil. They're not righteous. It all, it's all cause, goes back to the fall. It all goes back to the garden, to the tree of knowledge and good and evil. But Jehovah's plan of salvation is eternal. Although the works, and we've read this, were finished from the foundation of the world, God is not bound to time. Jehovah is... Yah, He is. He, He was. Vahe, He is to come. His salvation is eternal. His foundations are laid. He's already finished the work. He's already completed it. He laid the foundation, and then it's going to be completed at the day of redemption, the day of Jehovah, where the book of Revelation says, And there shall be time... No more. World without end, it says. Ion, age without end. He's come to build the temple. The man whose name is the branch. 
It says, And they that are far off shall come and build in the temple of Jehovah, and the man whose name is the branch is none other than Yeshua Mashiach. Yeshua HaMashiach. He shall build the temple of Jehovah. It says, in verse 12, Zechariah 6, 12, Behold the man whose name is a branch, and he shall grow up from his place, and he shall build the temple of Jehovah. Remember this, because when you get to the New Testament, you're going to find what Yeshua is doing. We read those verses, and we come back to them, where Yeshua says, And thou art Peter, calling him a stone, and upon this rock I will build my church, my ecclesia. Yeshua came to fulfill all Scripture. The whole Scripture is written about Him. He shall build the temple of Jehovah. And then it says, And He shall bear the glory. All praise and worship goes to Him. We read that in the prayer in last Sabbath where Yeshua prayed about the glory which He had with the Father before the foundation of the world. Yeshua shall bear the glory. Then it says, He shall sit and rule upon His throne. There's only one throne in heaven. He shall be a priest. It says, Upon His throne, Christ is the high priest which is passed into the heavens. And then it says, The council of peace shall be between them both. At the end of verse 13, it says, He shall be a priest upon His throne, and the council of peace shall be between them both. And then, if you look at each one of these verses here in Zechariah chapter six and chapter uh, Zechariah chapter six verses twelve and thirteen, listen to these verses. Behold, the man whose name is the branch, and she, he shall grow up out of his place, and he shall build the temple of Jehovah. Even he shall build the temple of Jehovah. And he shall bear the glory. Okay? Contrast that to what the devil says in Ezekiel. I will ascend into heaven. I will sit upon the throne. I will be like the Most High. It was, that's what the devil wants, wanted. He wanted the throne. He wanted the all the glory, He wants all of it. So you find that again throughout all the Scripture. In Amos chapter 9, we covered this a few weeks ago. Turn the book of Amos chapter 9. And we read here a few weeks ago in verse 1. It says, I saw the Lord standing upon the altar... And he said, Smite the lintel of the door, that the post may shake, and cut them in the head, all of them. And I will slay the last of them with the sword. He that fleeth of them shall not flee away, and he that escaped of them shall not be delivered. And then I read, we read, Though they dig into hell, then shall my hand take them. Though they climb up to heaven, thence will I bring them down. Okay? And I talked about how Babylon... And we read this a week or two ago. How they carried the ephah. And they carried it to build it a house in the land of Shinar. Or Shinir. Everything that Jehovah Yeshua is doing. The devil is trying to copy and mimic. And take mankind away from, from Jehovah Yeshua. And you find that throughout the scripture. Though they climb up to heaven, Babylon was placed at a specific place. For their tower Babylon was to get them into heaven. 
What did Yeshua say? I am the true shepherd. He that climbeth up some other way is a thief and a robber. They climbeth up some other way. So again, Yeshua, when He says, And thou art Peter, a stone, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. When He said the gates of hell, He's saying this on top of Mount Hermon, which again, it goes into other studies where you're going to find out exactly what the Tower of Babylon was, exactly where Mount Hermon was. Okay? More to it. All the scripture, there's more to all these things. They're not to be glossed over. Every place, every verse, all the scripture has a meaning. Nothing is in vain. Jehovah does not create things for void and emptiness. He doesn't create things for confusion. He doesn't create things that don't bring forth good fruit. Whatever Yeshua does, it's forever. It's eternal. And then it says, if we continue here in Amos chapter 9, it says here in verse 11, In that day, and this is a prophecy, will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen, and close up the breaches thereof, and I will raise up his ruins, and I will build it as in the days of old. Alright? And there's more scriptures to this. He's going to raise up the tabernacle of David that has fallen. Go back to Zechariah. And let's look at chapter 4 which we read. Zechariah 4. Verse 6. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of Jehovah unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith Jehovah. Who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel, Thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, crying, Grace, grace unto it. Not by might, nor by power. What Yeshua builds, he builds a building made without hands. The scripture says there in Hebrews 11, For Abraham looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Again and again, you're going to get reference in Scripture showing you Yeshua is going to build again the tabernacle of David that has fallen. He's going to close up the breaches thereof. He's going to raise up the ruins and He will build it as in the days of old. He's building His building We read there in 1 Peter chapter 2, and yea, as lively stones are built up a spiritual house without hands. Christ being the chief cornerstone. It says, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith Jehovah. That word might is chayim. We began in Zechariah chapter 6, verse 10. It talks about take of them of the captivity, even Heldiah, or, or it's like the same word meaning strength of Tobijah, which means Jehovah is good, and Jedediah, which means Jehovah has known, which are come from Babylon. Okay? Zerubbabel means from Babylon. These men have come from Babylon. And have come thou the same day and go into the house of Josiah, the son of Je Zephaniah. Then he commands and says, put, make crowns and set them upon 
the head of Joshua, the son of Jehoshadak, the high priest, and speak unto him, saying, Thus speaketh Jehovah Sebot, saying, Behold, the man whose name is the branch, and he shall grow up out of his place, and he shall build the temple of Jehovah. And unless you start reading the New Testament, understanding what God's plan is and what He's doing, you're, not, you, you're going to miss it. You're going to miss, even when it shows you in the book of Revelation, New Jerusalem descending from heaven as a bride adorned for her husband. Why is New Jerusalem coming down from heaven? Why did Yeshua say, I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, there ye may be also. Where is the place that He is? It's His place. Here in Zechariah chapter 6, verse 12, it says, And He shall grow up out of His place. Yeshua says, I go away. And the way ye know, and where I go ye know, and the way ye know. And Philip says, or Thomas said, one of them said, we don't know where you're going, and how shall we know the way? Okay? He's speaking, trying to get you to understand what he's saying. And unless you know Scripture, you would know the place and the way. Because what happened when Adam and Eve were driven from the Garden of Eden, they were driven out of the way. They were driven out of the garden eastward. The voice of Jehovah walked there in the garden. Where, where is Yeshua taking us back? Where, is the, where, where has the forerunner for us entered? The forerunner, He's entered in before us to prepare the place for us. Where is He entered into? The Holy of Holies. What is in the Holy of Holies? The throne of grace. The mercy seat, the Ark of the Covenant. For years I've been preaching one long continuous message. Believe it or not, he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. As Yeshua said, wisdom is justified of her children. We read there. How during the time of Moses, the Ark of the Covenant went before them three days' journey to seek out a resting place for them. And when the Ark of the Covenant arose, went, stood up, Moses stood up and said, Let, Yeho let Jehovah arise and let his enemies be scattered before the before him. What is Moses saying? What is all these things we've been reading for the last few years? The Ark of the Covenant went before them. Christ, the, who is the forerunner, went before us into the most holy place. It's telling you something. It's all about restoring you. Yeshua says, I stand at the door. What does Christ mean? What does Messiah mean? It means anointed. What is who is anointed? When Yeshua, when Moses, well, well, when Yeshua gave Moses the commandment for the high priest, the children of Levi, the children of Levi had the covenant of shalom, of peace, because they feared Jehovah. They feared him. Levi was chosen. The tribe of Levi was chosen. The covenant of peace was given to the tribe, the children of Levi. Aaron being a child of Levi. Moses being a child of Levi. They were the priests that were supposed to teach. We'll find that in the book of Malachi. Anyway, the first high priest was Aaron. And I said this way back. I said, 
Who anointed Aaron? Who? It was Moses. Moses poured the oil upon Aaron's head. It's described there even in Psalms. He poured it, the oil upon his head. He anointed Aaron. And it ran down. It was it ran down his beard. It went it went on his uh, the clothes, the uh, priestly garments he was wearing. Even so, Christ means anointed. And he stands at the door as a high priest. But the sacrifice, he says there in many scriptures, sacrifice and offering, I would not, but a body, Jehovah says, thou has prepared me. When Abraham went to offer up Isaac as a type and figure of the firstborn son whom Abraham received in a figure, Abra Isaac asked Abraham, where's the sacrifice? What did Abraham say? Jehovah himself is the sacrifice. He provides himself as the sacrifice. Again, the Gospels reveal Throughout all the scripture, the gospels reveal Yeshua stands at the door. The law, or the Old Testament scripture, the Torah, was our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. What do you mean bring you to Christ? You have to go to the door of the tabernacle. You have to go to the east gate. You have to have a propitiation for your sins. And without blood, there is... No remission, and the blood, only the blood of Yeshua Himself is accepted. There is no sacrifice. There is no more sacrifice. The blood of bulls and goats will not get you to heaven. We read there in Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith Jehovah. His work begins by His spirit. The day of Pentecost began with the promise of the Father, the power from on high, and His work continues. It was Yeshua HaMashiach, the anointed high priest, the author and finisher of our faith of eternal salvation. The whole scripture is written of Him, and by Him, and for Him. Turn to Zechariah chapter 3. Zechariah chapter 3, and we'll start in verse 6. And the angel of Jehovah protested unto Joshua, saying, Thus saith Jehovah Sabaoth, If thou wilt walk in my ways, and if thou wilt keep my charge, then, wilt, then shalt thou also judge my house, and shalt also keep my courts, and I will give thee places to walk among these that stand by. Hear now, o Joshua, the high priest, Thou and thy fellows that sit before thee, for they are men wondered at. For behold, I will bring forth my servant the branch, again all capital. For behold, the stone that I have laid before Joshua upon one stone shall be seven eyes. Behold, I will engrave the graving thereof, saith Jehovah Sabaoth, and I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day. In that day, saith Jehovah Sabaoth, shall every man shall ye call every man his neighbor under the vine and under the fig tree. Reference to the millennium. Alright? How does the scripture say, talks about he'll bring forth his servant the branch, all capital. And how does the scripture say, and I'll remove the iniquity of that land in one day? You can understand, in one day, at the cross, Yeshua took away all the sins of the world. Okay? These scriptures, whether it's one verse, one paragraph, one chapter, is all going to point you to Christ. And it all does, all the scripture points you to Christ. So when you read the New Testament, you're going to understand it's written from a point. The gospel is explained to you, Christ fulfilled all the word to get you to believe in Him, 
in Yeshua HaMashiach, that ye may be saved. Repentance from sin and faith towards Christ. You, you look at these verses, and you have to look at more verses. You have to read and know the law, the prophets, and the Psalms. Because Yeshua said, You search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life. But they are they which testify of me. You have to know God's eternal plan of salvation. Everything that is written reveals and shows us Yeshua, who is Yehovah in the flesh, is Yahshua. Yah, Yah salvation, His Shua. Turn to Gospel of John chapter 2. Gospel of John chapter 2. In verse 18. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, What sign showest thou unto us, seeing that thou doest these things? He turned over, he overthrew the money, the money changers and overthrew the tables. And then in verse 17 it talks about the scripture, it says, And his disciples remembered that it is written, The zeal of thine house hath eaten me up. So here in verse 18, Then the Jews, then answered the Jews and said unto him, What sign showest thou unto us, seeing thou doest these things? Yeshua answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. He'll build it again in three days. Verse 20, Then said the Jews, Forty and six years was this temple in building, and wilt thou rear it up in three days? But he spake of the temple of his body. When therefore he was risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this unto them, and they believed the scripture and the word which Yeshua had said. You see, the Gospels, the New Testament is written that you can believe the Scripture, which is the Old Testament, in reference to. You believe the Old Testament fully, you're going to believe in Yeshua fully. Because all the Scripture is written of Him. And they believe the Scripture and the Word which Yeshua had said. Now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover and the feast day, many believed in his name when they saw the miracles which he did. But Yeshua did not commit himself unto them because he knew all men. Of course you're going to believe a miracle. Wow. That doesn't save you. You have to know Yeshua. You have to believe in Yeshua. And needed not that any should testify of man, for he knew what was in man. He knows if you're a good tree or you're an evil tree. The axe is now laid at the root of the trees. Every tree that bringeth not good forth, bring forth good fruit, is hewn down and cast into the fire. He knows what's in man. He won't, what does it say? Commit himself unto them, because he knew all men. Many people say, I believe, I believe, but Yeshua does not commit himself to them. As I explained, a covenant has to have two parties. You can't just say a prayer and say, Okay, I, I'm saved, and declare yourself saved. Where is the agreement that Yeshua Himself, Jehovah, commits to you? Where is that? Where is Him agreeing with you that you're saved? You can pray a prayer, and you can be a child of iniquity, a twofold child of hell. And many preach this gospel of believe, believe only, and you're saved. No. Be converted. Repent and be converted. Turn. Amend your ways. Go back and obey all His Word. 
Yeshua said, if you love me, then keep my commandments. He said to obey. He said to become a good tree. He said, make the tree good and its fruit good. Else, make the tree corrupt and its fruit corrupt. He said, be converted. Man fell and degenerated in the Garden of Eden. They degenerated. They lost their holiness. They lost their sanctification. They became bound to death. Okay? They were cast out of the house. They were cast out of the garden. Satan rejoiced over that. But the works were already finished from the foundation of the world. Yeshua already knew, foreknew Adam and Eve. He already planned this. He's already building and has finished the works. Although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. He's the lamb slain from before the foundation of the world. Well, how can that be? Remember I preached. I preached there... Again, in Matthew chapter 16, Yeshua's there. In Matthew 17, He's on there with Peter, James, and John. And I preached on the transfiguration. And Yeshua, Jehovah, was transfigured before them. His kabod, His glory, shone before them. And Peter's looking at Yeshua and behind Him, is Moses and Elijah. Well, how can that be? Because you cannot raise up dead spirits. That is necromancy. That is a sin. That is wickedness. Okay? They weren't dead. They were alive. Just like Peter, James, and John were alive. They were all there in the same time, in the same place. There on Mount Hermon which is Deuteronomy 4.42, which is Zion, S-I-O-N. And then I explained to you how when Moses was there talking to Jehovah, he says, I wanted to see you. His request was to see Jehovah. And Jehovah says, no man can see me and live. But what, what, did, he, what did Jehovah say? He says, I'll... Place you between the cleft of the rock, and I'll place my hand upon you, and I'll cause my glory, my kabod, to pass by there in front of you, and ye shall see my back and not my face. Okay? So Peter is looking past Yeshua and seeing Moses. Moses is seeing the back of Yeshua. Then you have Elijah there. Elijah is uh, 600 years later, 400 years after Moses. Where did Mo Moses or Elijah flee to? He fled to Mount Sinai after he slain the priest of Baal. I preached on that, the 12 stones that he set up. He flees, he goes to Mount Sinai, again to the cleft of the rock. And what's so special about that place? I've preached it before. There's other scripture, at least, that I read. Both of them are seeing Christ when they're alive. Elijah was taken up to heaven in a chariot of fire, alive. Okay? So anyway, Yeshua, he's building... In fulfilling all the scripture. He's fulfilling it. In time. And out of time. Because that's how the gospel is. He's the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. He said it is finished. He said that 2,000 years ago. It is finished. Yeshua is coming back. The day of redemption. It's called the harvest. The gathering. It's there in the book of Revelation. So in three days I'll raise it up. And then let's read here in the Gospel of Matthew. 
So you're reading the scripture and it's being showing you we start reading the New Testament and the Gospel. It begins in verse 1, the book of the generation of Yeshua, Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Then it begins in verse 2, Abraham begot Isaac, and Isaac begot Jacob, and Jacob begot Judah and his brethren. And then it goes on till verse 6, and Jesse begot David the king, and David the king begot Solomon of her that had been wife of Uriah, and Solomon begot Robam, and Robam begot Abiah, and goes on. And then it says there in verse 11, And Josiah begot Jeconiah and his brethren about the time they were carried away to Babylon. Okay? And it marks a dividing place. Okay? They were carried away to Babylon for their sin and breaking Torah. And then in verse 12 it says, And after they were brought to Babylon, Jeconiah begot Salathiel, and Salathiel begot who? Zerubbabel. And Zerubbabel begot Abihud, and Abihud Eliakim, and Eliakim begot Azor. And then it goes on to verse 16, And Jacob begot Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Yeshua, who was called Christ, or Messiah. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. And from David until the carrying away into Babylon are 14 generations. And from the carrying away into Babylon unto Christ are 14 generations. So now you find here Zerubbabel. Okay? We've read there. We've been reading here in Zechariah about Zerubbabel. So you're going to find out why these verses... In Zechariah chapter, basically all of Zechariah, he's talking about Joshua the high priest, he's talking about Zerubbabel, he's talking about these three men, Haldiah, Tobajah, and Jedediah, which are come from Babylon. In Zechariah verse 6, verse 10. And then here, we read here a couple of weeks ago, Zechariah 4, 6, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith Jehovah. Christ was born of Mary, a virgin. Okay? And then it says here in verse 7, Who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? Thou shalt become a plain. And he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, crying, Grace, grace unto it. The scripture says in the New Testament, Moses brought in the law, but Christ, brought in grace truth and grace something like that then in verse 8 here in Zechariah chapter 4 more of the word of Jehovah came unto me saying the hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house his hand shall also finish it and thou shalt know that Jehovah Sabaoth has sent me unto you for who hath despised the day of small things for they shall rejoice and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel with those seven, the stone with seven eyes. They are the eyes of Jehovah which run to and fro the whole earth. And then we, we came back here to Zechariah chapter 6. We find here in Matthew the genealogy of Christ, the branch. What is the branch? It's talking about his genealogy. The branch comes from the loins of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, from Judah to King David, to them that came back from Babylon until he was born 2,000 years ago. He, that's why he's called the branch. He shall grow up out of his place. There's talking about Babylon and in the middle Babylon how long was Babylon Babylon was 70 years of captivity 70 years and they say a year for each year that they didn't keep the jubilee okay 
And then we find in verse 12 of Matthew chapter 1, Zerubbabel, which we just read about in Zechariah. Every scripture is important. We read here, we'll read it again, in Zechariah chapter 3, in verse 8. Hear now, O Joshua, the high priest, and thy fellows that sit before thee, for they are men wandered at. For behold, I will bring forth my servant, the branch. For behold, the stone that I have laid before Joshua upon one stone shall be seven eyes. Behold, I will engrave the engraving, the engraving thereof, saith Jehovah Sabaoth, and I will remove the iniquity of that land. In one day. What is Yeshua come to do? In Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, or verse, yeah, verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son, capital S, and thou shalt call his name Yeshua, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Jehovah by the prophet saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted God with us. Then Joseph being raised from sleep did as the angel of Jehovah had bidden him and took unto him his wife and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son and he called his name Yeshua. The scripture was fulfilled. His name is called Emmanuel. Emmanuel, God with us. And what in verse 21, and, she'll, and she shall bring forth the son, and thou shalt call his name Yeshua. For he shall save his people from their sins. Go back to Zechariah chapter 3. It talks about he'll bring forth the servant, the branch. So you have the genealogy there in Gospel of Matthew chapter 1. In Gospel of Matthew chapter, 20, uh, chapter 1 verse 21, it says there at the end of verse 9, And I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day. For he shall save his people from their sins. Turn to Zechariah chapter 1. We read this again a couple weeks ago. But here in verse 2, Jehovah hath been sore displeased with your fathers. Why? Because they broke the covenant. Therefore, say thou unto them, Thus saith Jehovah Sabaoth, Turn ye unto me, Saith Jehovah Sabaoth, and I will turn unto you, saith Jehovah Sabaoth. This is a call for repentance. Be not as your fathers, unto whom the former prophets have cried, saying, Thus saith Jehovah Sabaoth, turn ye now from your evil ways and from your evil doings, but, ye, but they did not hear nor hearken unto me, saith Jehovah. Your fathers, where are they? And the prophets, do they live forever? But my words and my statutes, which I command my servants, the prophets, did they not take hold of your fathers? And they returned and said, Like as Jehovah Sabaoth thought to do unto us according to our ways and according to our doings, so hath he dealt with us. The word of God, Yeshua said, Not one jot or tittle shall pass from the Torah till all be fulfilled. Yeshua said, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. Then again, here in Zechariah chapter 1, it says in verse 14, So the angel that communed with me said unto me, Cry thou, saying, Thus saith Jehovah Sabaoth, I am jealous for Jerusalem and for Zion with a great jealousy, and I am very sore displeased with the heathen that are at ease. For I was a bit displeased, and they helped forward the affliction. Therefore, thus saith Jehovah, I am returned to Jerusalem with mercies. My house shall be built in it, saith Jehovah Sabaoth, and a line shall be 
stretch forth upon Jerusalem. Yeshua was the one that returned to Jerusalem. We read there. And what did Yeshua do and say? He said, destroy this house and I will rebuild it in three days. Here again in Zechariah chapter 1, verse 17. Cry yet, saying, Thus saith Jehovah to both, My cities through prosperity shall yet be spread abroad, and Jehovah shall yet comfort Zion, and shall yet choose Jerusalem. The call in Zechariah 1, chapter 1, verse 3. Therefore say thou unto them, Thus saith Jehovah to both, Turn ye unto me, saith Jehovah to both, and I will turn unto you, saith Jehovah to both. And what did Yeshua come and start doing? He starts preaching repentance. Turn to Matthew chapter 3, verse 1. It began first with John the Baptist. Matthew 3, verse 1, In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Again fulfilling the prophet Isaiah. So the gospel begins with the call to repentance. Here before, 400 years before the gospel, before Yeshua came, Jehovah is already crying for repentance. He's coming to rebuild that which is fallen. He's, co he's coming to save His people in one day. And then, so in Matthew 3, 1, John the Baptist starts coming to preach, and then turn to Matthew chapter 4, in verse 17. Actually, in verse 13, And leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which, it, which is upon the seacoast and the borders of Zebulun and Naphtali, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, The land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people which sat in darkness saw great light, and to them which sat in the region in shadow of death, Light is sprung up. All that verse was talking about, those verses are talking about Yeshua. Yeshua says, I am the light of the world. He, Yeshua says, I am the bread from heaven. Yeshua says, I am the good shepherd. Yeshua says, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall find what? Rest. Shalom. Verse 17 from that time, Yeshua began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. What is the kingdom of heaven? Again, the restoration of the Garden of Eden, the restoration of heaven, of Adam and Eve and Adam's race, back into heaven, its salvation. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's, it, he's, he's laid the foundation in Zion. The work that Yeshua came to do was to lay the foundation in Zion. Yeshua came to finish the work. That work that He said He came to finish. Turn to Gospel of John chapter 17. Gospel of John chapter 17. This was the prayer of Yeshua that we read last week. These words spake Yeshua and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy Son that thy Son also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God and Yeshua Mashiach, whom thou hast sent. 
I have glorified thee on earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. He's praying before he, his death, burial, and resurrection. These prayers, these strong prayers in Christ, he's the author of eternal salvation. He said, I glorified thee on earth. I finished the work which thou gavest me to do. What was that work? To restore and rebuild the tabernacle that was fallen. A spiritual house with lively stones. He came to lay in Zion the chief cornerstone. Zechariah 1.14, we read it already. Zechariah chapter 1, verses 14 through 16. Therefore, thus saith Jehovah, I am returned to Jerusalem with mercies. My house shall be built in it. Zechariah chapter 2. Turn to Zechariah chapter 2. Listen to this verse. Verse 10. Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion, for lo, I come. Who's saying this? Jehovah saying it. For lo, I come, and I will dwell in the midst of thee, saith Jehovah. And many nations shall be joined to Jehovah in that day, and shall be my people. And I will dwell in the midst of thee, and thou shalt know that Jehovah Tzavot had sent me, capital M, unto, unto thee. And Jehovah shall inherit Judah his portion in the holy land, and shall choose Jerusalem again. Be silent, O all flesh, before Jehovah. Listen, for he is raised up out of his holy habitation. You, you sung that song, O silent night, silent night, the day the shepherd sang, Jehovah is born. There in Bethlehem of Judea. That's the prophecy. He fulfilled every word of God in the Old Testament. What does it say? It says, For lo, I come, saith Jehovah. Who came? It's Yeshua. Jehovah came in the flesh, born of the virgin. He shall yet choose Jerusalem again. It's all about Zion. It's all about laying in Zion, the chief cornerstone, the city of God. That was always God's purpose. He told Adam and Eve, be fruitful and multiply. Why? For my house shall be filled again with children. It's his desire. He, he has chosen it. For I have chosen it. I have chosen to dwell there. Be silent. O all flesh before Jehovah, for he is raised up out of his holy habitation, out of his place. Okay? Remember we began in Zechariah chapter 6.10. We read there in verse 12, Behold the man whose name is the branch, all capital, and he shall grow up from his place. He shall grow up. From his place. And he shall build the temple. Of Jehovah. Yeshua came. For lo I come. And I will dwell in the midst of thee. And I preached on this verse before. About a month or two ago. And I will dwell in the midst of thee. Yeshua came. And dwelt among us. As the scripture says, and we all beheld his glory. The gospel says, the glory as of the only the glory of the only begotten Son of God. Turn to Exodus chapter 9, 19. I've read, I've preached on these verses also. Exodus chapter 19.
Exodus 19, verse 7, And Moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid before their faces all these words which Jehovah commanded him. And all the people answered together and said, All that Jehovah had spoken will we do. And Moses returned the words of the people unto Jehovah. And Jehovah said unto Moses, Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak with thee and believe thee forever. And Moses told the words of the people unto Jehovah. What does it say? It says, Lo, I come unto thee in the thick cloud. Yeshua came. They saw the, the star of Bethlehem. Yeshua rose from the dead and the clouds received him at his, at his ascension, 40 days after his resurrection. Yeshua is returning again with the clouds. Behold, as the book of Enoch, Enoch says, Jehovah cometh with the clouds. Yeshua came to take away the iniquity. In one day, the iniquity of people was of that land was taken away. In Zechariah 1, Verses 16, Therefore thus saith Jehovah, I return Jerusalem with mercies, my house shall be built in it. Zechariah 2.10, Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion, for lo, I come. And I will dwell in the midst of thee. We read here in Exodus chapter 19, Yeshua came. Yeshua is the messenger of the covenant. Turn to the book of Malachi. The last book in the Old Testament, chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3, verse 1. This is a prophecy of both John the Baptist and of Yeshua. Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me, capital M, and the Lord whom ye seek, shall suddenly come to His temple, even the messenger of the covenant whom ye delight in. Behold, He shall come, saith Jehovah Tzaboeth. What did Yeshua do? He went into His temple. He shall suddenly come to His temple. Yeshua stood there in the temple and He preached Himself. He preached. He is Christ, the very Christ. He is Messiah. Behold, I will send my messenger before thy face, and he shall prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant whom ye, ye delight in. Behold, he shall come, say, Jehovah Tzaboeth. Turn to Psalm chapter 40. Book of Psalms, chapter 40. We'll start in verse 5. Many, O Lord, O Jehovah, my God, are thy wonderful works which thou hast done, and thy thoughts which are to us word, they cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. Sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire, mine ears hast thou opened, burnt offering and sin offering thou hast not required. Then said I, Lo, I come. In the volume of the book it is written of me. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy Torah is within my heart. This is Yeshua. Speaking of Yeshua. Then said I, Lo, I come. In the volume of the book it is written of me. All the scripture is written of Yeshua. Turn to Hebrews Chapter 10.
Hebrews 10. Where he speaks here about Psalm 40. Because Psalm 40 talks about sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire. Okay? Burnt offering and sin offering hast thou not required. We already read there in Zechariah how he takes away the, the iniquity of that land in one day. Here, the Apostle Paul explains the gospel. For the law having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comer there the comers there unto you perfect, for then would they not have ceased to be offered, because that the worshippers once purged should have had no more conscience of sins. But in those sacrifices there, there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sins. Wherefore, when he cometh, again, for lo, I come. Who is coming? Jehovah himself is coming. Yeshua is coming. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body thou hast prepared me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast had no pleasure. Then said I, Lo, I come. In the volume of the book it is written of me, to do thy will, O God. O God. Above when he said, Sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings, and offering for sin thou wouldest not, neither had, had his pleasure therein, which are offered by the Torah. Then said he, Lo, I come, to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second, by the which we, by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Yeshua Mashiach once for all. The foundation of the New Testament is built on the law, the Torah, the Psalms, and the prophets. That's the foundation our faith is built upon. It is one continual story. Do you understand the New Testament? You have to understand the Old Testament. And then turn to Hosea. Hosea chapter 6. Hosea chapter 6, verse 1. Here's another prophecy of Yeshua and the gospel. Come and let us return unto Jehovah, for he hath torn and he will heal us. He hath smitten and he will bind us up. After two days will he revive us. In the third day he will raise us up, and we shall live in his sight. Then shall we know if we follow on to know Jehovah. His going forth is prepared as the morning, and he shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and former rain unto the earth. Jehovah will come to the earth. There is no such thing as, well, where is Yeshua in the Old Testament? The reason why many Jews today do not believe in Yeshua are not Christians because they don't even read the Old Testament. They read the Talmud, which is a bunch of nonsense, a bunch of man-made book of laws. It's like the lawyer's book of uh, their own religious devil worship because it does go on to Zohar and all their mag magic stuff. It's total opposite. Their Talmud and their scriptures are total opposite of the Old, Old and New Testament. 100% diabolical. Again, it's so clear. In Hosea chapter 6, it says, Come and let us return unto Jehovah. Repent. 
Come back to Jehovah. The, like the prodigal son. Come, let us return to Jehovah. Back to the covenant. The new covenant made in His blood. He says after, it says, after two days will He revive us. In the third day He will raise us up and we shall live in His sight. The death, burial, and resurrection is all there. Hosea chapter 5. Listen to this verse. Verse 15. Listen, it says, I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense and seek my face in their affliction, they will seek me early. Jehovah said this. He'll go back into his, unto his place until they, until they acknowledge their offense and seek my face. In the time of Yeshua, they were waiting. They were longing for. They were praying for Messiah to come. Okay? I will go and return to my place. I want to point something out. We began today with Zechariah chapter 6. And then verse 12 we read, Behold the man whose name is the branch, all capital, and he shall grow up from his place, and he shall build the temple of Jehovah. Even he shall build the temple of Jehovah and shall bear the glory and shall sit and rule upon his throne. And he shall be a priest upon his throne and the council of peace shall be between them both. It says here, and he shall grow up from his place. That's the KJV. From his place is not there in Hebrew. Yet here we have it in English. Now I'll tell you why. Because this word, we have a more sure word of prophecy. When I went to look up that word place, it wasn't there. But it says, and he shall grow up from his place. I already read to you two verses about the place. Here's another witness. And I will go and return to my place. Then we read the other one. He shall come from his holy habitation. That is His place. And that's our future home. Yeshua says that where I am, there ye may be also. There's so many verses about Yeshua. But we're going to close with just a few of them. Telling you the exact details that you would think that you're reading the New Testament. Okay? And I'm going to give you some example. He takes away the iniquity. Well, here you have the resurrection. He takes away the iniquity of his people, the people of the land, in one day. And then turn to Psalm chapter 22. This whole psalm is about the crucifixion in exact detail. Psalm 22. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me and from the words of my roaring? What did Yeshua say? He, 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 he said this on the cross, on the tree. He said, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. And then, I'm just going to jump to verse 16. It says, For dogs have compassed me, the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. My hands and my feet, they pierced them. The Passover, you put the blood on the lentil and the two side posts. They pierced, they put the crown of thorns upon his head. Then it says in verse 18, they, they part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. Go and read the Gospels. They all quote these verses, how Yeshua fulfilled it. They pierced my hands and my feet. Turn to Isaiah chapter 52. Isaiah 
Isaiah 52. At the end of it, verse 13, Behold, my servant shall deal prudently and shall be exalted and extolled and be very high. As many as as many were astonished at thee, his visage was so marred more than any man and his form more than the sons of men. So he shall sprinkle many nations. The king shall shut their mouths at him for that which had not been told them shall they see and that which they had not heard shall they consider. His visage was so marred they beat him there on the way to the Golgotha. Here again, vivid details. You would think you're reading the New Testament. Here in Isaiah 53, I call it the Gospel of Isaiah. Verse 1, Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of Jehovah revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. He's a branch. A tender plant. Again, Christ is the branch in the script, Old Testament Scripture. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. And as a root out of a dry ground, he hath no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon Him. And with His stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to His own way. And Jehovah hath laid on Him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and He was afflicted. Yet He opened not His mouth. He was brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shears is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living, for the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased Jehovah to bruise him, and he had put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of Jehovah shall prosper in his hand. Who do you think that, that scripture is, is all about Yeshua? A couple more. Turn to Zechariah chapter 9. Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ish and upon the colt, the foal of an ish. And I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace unto the heathen, and his dominion shall be from sea even to sea, and from the river even to the ends of the earth. As for thee also, by the blood of thy covenant, I have sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit, wherein is no water. He led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Psalm 68. Turn to Zechariah chapter 11. Verse 12. And I said unto them, If ye think, if ye think good, give me my price. And if not, forbear. So they weighed for my price 30 pieces of silver. They cast lots for his garment. His visage was so marred more than any man. By his stripes are we healed. For the iniquity for us 
Did he die and shed his blood? Here we find a, a scripture or a prophecy about 30 pieces of silver that Judas betrayed him for. Fulfilled in Matthew chapter 18. Turn to Zechariah chapter 12, verse 9. You read there Psalm 22, where it says, They pierced my hands and my feet. Here in Zechariah chapter 9, or chapter 12, verse 9, and it shall come to pass in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem, and I'll pour upon the house of David. And upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplications. And they shall look upon me, capital M, whom they have pierced. And they shall mourn for him, capital H, as one mourneth for his only son. And shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. They shall look upon me. Whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son. You don't think the crucifixion, the death, the burial, every detail Yeshua fulfilled? Yeshua said, You search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, but they are they which testify of me. The work that Yeshua came to do, he said there on the tree, he said, It is finished. It is fulfilled in time and out of time. And for all eternity, he's, His will is going to be done. They pierced my hands and my feet. But He was wounded for our transgressions, for the iniquity of us all. And by His stripes are we healed. The death, burial, and resurrection are all prophesied in the Old Testament and it's all fulfilled in the New Testament. Alright, let's pray.